This is episode number 52 of Two Grown-Ups and a Mouse. In today's episode, we will be talking about things available at the land at Epcot Center in Walt Disney World Resort. Hi there, I'm AJ. I'm Andrew. And you are listening to Two Grown-Ups and a Mouse. The podcast. The podcast. And you might be watching us on YouTube. So if you are, hi. I'm the video cast. Yeah, the video cast. You can find us all over, Two Grown-Ups and a Mouse. That's how you find us. Two Grown-Ups and a Mouse.com is our website or all social media or podcast systems. Just look up Two Grown-Ups and a Mouse and we will be there. Please remember to follow, rate, and review. Let's get into it. All righty. All righty. So... There are different areas of Epcot in Future World and in World Showcase. And the land is one of the areas that is in Future World. That's right. And there are a few places to eat and a few attractions in there that you can participate in. And what's nice about the land is it's basically all in one building. That's right. Right? You go into this building. What's not nice... (laughs) It's not horrible. Uh, it is a pretty steep incline to get into the building. That's right. You enter on the second floor and then you can... Second-ish. Second-ish floor. <laughs> and it is a um, a ramp, though. There's right. no stairs involved. So if you are immobile, if you're in a wheelchair, it's not a problem. You just get pushed up the ramp. But honestly, it's a little bit steep, in my opinion. And then you go down a ramp to go you know further down they mm-hmm. do have escalator stairs and an elevator so that you can get to that lower level which is basically where everything is right. now i was looking at the map at, at uh, the disney world website mm-hmm. and if i see it correctly it looks like that movie that they used to show i don't think they're showing it anymore they might be they used to show a movie when you walked in kind of on that level there's a little theater there, but I'm right. not sure if anything is playing there right now. So yeah. we're not going to talk about that because honestly, we're not sure if it's available. Right. But basically, all the other attractions that we're going to talk about, except for the first one, um, the majority of them are on the bottom level. Mm-hmm. So the first thing at the land that we are going to talk about is Chip and Dale's Harvest Feast at Garden Grill. That's right. Most people just call it Garden Grill. Uh, yeah. And it's a rotating restaurant. Isn't mm-hmm. there a rotating restaurant in Florida? There is. I just can't remember. I'm sure there's many of them. Well, maybe. <laughs> but this is a slowly moving platform. Right. So while you're sitting down, apparently the restaurant kind of moves slowly. So uh, we've never eaten there. Yeah. My, my understanding is it takes takes a while to go all the way around. And it overlooks the, uh, the, the greenhouse areas of the land pavilion. Because you can see the restaurant when you're on the ride. Okay, so basically next time you ride the Living with the Land ride, you should look up and yep. see if you see the restaurant. Yeah, that yeah, reminds me of um, you can sit in the Pinocchio on the upper level and you can see Small World. Right, you can see it, you can see the, the ride loading and the, the cast off, I guess. As, right. As people go by and you can wave and they'll wave back. And, right, so same thing. Yep. So at Garden Grill, apparently you can do that as well. Mm-hmm. It is character dining. No characters are guaranteed, of course, but it's mostly Chippendale. It didn't really say what the other characters might be. And it is family style dining. If you've ever dined at Ohana inside of the Polynesian, it's similar to that where you they're just going to bring you a big plate full of everything. Or right. multiple platefuls. So, for example, for breakfast, the menu is sticky buns, scrambled eggs, bacon and sausage, fruit, homestyle potatoes, and Mickey waffles. So the server will probably come over and tell you this is what we have. You know, did you want all of it or, you know, whatever and whatnot. Mm-hmm. This way, you know, if you don't eat bacon and sausage, they don't need to bring you the bacon and sausage. Right. But they'll bring you out a little bit of everything. And they do have a full drink menu, including for breakfast, mimosas and Bloody Marys. Right. They want to make sure you get your alcohol going, right? Hey. It is Epcot. It's not Magic Kingdom. So. It is not Magic Kingdom. And lunch and dinner have the same menu as each. They have salad, you know, like a green salad. Mm-hmm. 
And uh, and that and it's called the harvest inspired salad. Well, and not only that, I think a lot of the ingredients come from what is grown at the land. That's what they say. Uh, Maybe not all of it. But. We we had talked about that, but I mean, if you look at all the the amount of stuff that they're growing in there, it's not enough really to to keep up a restaurant for very long. But but I'm sure whatever they do grow does go into the restaurant. Well, and so they might have sure. other greenhouses on property that aren't visible, but. Still too. grown on property. Sure. You never know. Mm-hmm. So again, lunch and dinner has the same menu, which is salad, turkey, stuffing, mac and cheese, grilled beef, veggies, mashed potatoes, French fries, and the dessert option is a very short cake. They do have a very drink menu, which is much more extensive than the food menu. Right. Andrew's looking at the menu right now. Well, it's just a the, it's a selection of wines that you can have for dinner. Seven different flavors of wine. That you can get by the bottle or your glass for most of them. Then, of course, different. Um, That's typical. Beer, typ- typical a lot of beers. Number of beers, and then there's there's about about ten nine nine ish beer nine ish beers and one mixed drink is what I'm looking at. Right. So I'm not sure if they have a full bar or not. You would have to ask them. Yeah, that I don't know because it might be pre mixed, and of course your typical. Juices, fruits, coffees, and teas are available. So it's just funny to me that they, you know, for the the menu, they have a little more than a half a dozen items. And then for the drink menu, they have about two dozen. Well, you know, people like their wine with dinner. Hey, they do recommend making reservations. And of course, as I said already, no characters are guaranteed. This is a $3 sign restaurant. The prices range between $35 and $60. And some dining plans are accepted. Mm Mm-hmm. So if you are on the Disney dining plan, you may be able to do it, but it might be more credits than some of the other restaurants. But that would be fun to do if we went with some people that had kids because it'd be fun to rotate. Right. Sure. You know, and they have enough, even though it is a very, you know, relatively limited menu for both breakfast and lunch, I feel that with the fruit and the veggies that they have available, that if you were trying to watch what you eat, they, you know, they, they'd be able to feed you enough. I like the hidden Mickey in the pictures. All the plates on the table are hidden Mickeys. Yeah, how about that? Um, someone actually paid attention when they took those pictures. Yeah, that's right. Now I'm getting hungry and just looking at sticky buns and Mickey waffles and all these things they offer there. Chicken and waffles? Not chicken and waffles. That is just wrong. Chicken is good. Waffles are good. Chicken and waffles together, bad. You know, AJ's opinion, not a fact. You know, you just... Uh, so... I don't like chicken and waffles. Well, I mean, I like having chicken. And then after I'm done, I could have waffles with ice cream as mm-hmm. dessert. But I don't understand chickles and waffles. Chickas? I don't know what I just said. I don't like chiclets with waffles either. <laughs> That's a weird one. Mm-hmm. But... Anyway, I'm, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to them. I'm not talking to you. Exactly. So we haven't tried it yet, but we would like to try it one day. It sounds like it might be fun. But what we have tried mm-hmm. dining at the land is Sunshine Seasons, right. which is their quick service. And basically, there are five bays where you can get, you know, prepared foods. It's not really cooked to order, right? I mean, you, you go up there and you say, oh, I want this, I want that. And they just kind of hand it to you, kind of like if you go to like a Sabaro's in the mall. Well, it's it's pre-prepared because it's a quick service. Um, obviously, you know, if you want to, if you were asked for something special, though, they will accommodate. We, we would think they would accommodate. Uh, yeah. I yeah, mean, yeah. it's Disney, I'm, so I'm, they're I'm usually pretty good about that. Never seen them not, so... <laughs> right. um, so yeah, it's it's basically walk up, ask for what you want, and then because it's because it's bays, you know, you walk up to the main, you know, say you wanted uh, the grill shop. Well, we you, didn't tell them what the bays were, so let's stop there. Sure, they, they have an Asian noodle shop, mm-hmm. a grill shop, yep. a sandwiches shop, a soup and salad shop, and a dessert and bakery shop. Right. So as Andrew started to say, there's five different bays, which I just mentioned the types, and they are one dollar signs, so they're basically fourteen ninety nine and under per adult, some dining plans accepted. Um definitely not tables in Wonderland because we've asked that. Right. And I don't think they give a pass holder discount because we try to remember to ask about those two things since we qualify. Right. But if you're on the Disney dining plan, of course they would take that there. Right. Um 
But yeah, they have meat dishes, vegetarian, some that are healthy, some that are less healthy. They have a pretty extensive menu available. Yeah, I mean, uh, you basically cover everything you'd want to do uh, or might need. There's some seafood items, uh, shrimp. Uh, there's pizzas. There's uh, beef, chicken, uh, and it, it's on the, a little bit on. I, I hes- hesitate to use the word healthier, but you know, oak grilled rotisserie chicken. Uh, so it's a half chicken with yellow rice and black beans. So it's not it's not like a fried chicken. I was going to say they have less fried items available. Do they even have a burger and fries? Uh, no, I didn't see one. Uh, unless right. there's one like on the kids menu or something. Right. But even then, I don't I don't think there is. Right, because it's it's the land, and again, they're right. they're um, promoting that they're making a lot of the items with the stuff that's grown there. Mm-hmm. So yeah, they do. They are trying to be a healthier alternative. We really enjoy eating there. We've eaten there quite a few times and snacked there as well. Yep. Um, because they do have a, an extensive variety. So, well, there's a lot of time. If as long as you're not going right at lunchtime or dinner time, uh, and it, you know. Obviously, if it's in season or, or whatever, it probably is. But, you know, if you pop in there at 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon because you want to get a, grab a snack, it's usually not busy. And it's know? being that it's indoors, there's ample seating there. Oh, yeah. Out of, out of a lot of the restaurants, this probably is one of the bigger quick service restaurant locations for seating. Yep. Um, so there's usually not a big issue finding a place to sit. Mm-hmm. And indoors, so it's cooler. You're in the air conditioning or if it's raining, you're not getting wet. I mean, right. so that lots of reasons that we really, really enjoy eating there. But, you know, if Andrew wants a red meat and I want poultry, not a problem. Right. I mean, it, it, there's really a lot of different options there. So it's really a great place yep. to dine at. And it's a good place to grab a snack, too. You know, just if you're hungry or something, because, uh, you know, like looking at the grab and go, I mean, there's just a small salad or a fruit and cheese plate or uh, a chicken wrap. And they're and they're reasonably sized. So right, you and I shared a pizza, right, as a snack because it was like we had had. I think that was a day that we had done a character breakfast, which you know that's mm-hmm. a little bigger, so it's almost lunch like. Um, so we didn't really want like a full lunch because we knew we were going to be having dinner soon. So right. we just split a pizza. Yep. Um, but lots of things that that you can snack on there or dine on there. So it's really a great location to eat at if you go to Epcot Center. I know a lot of people go to Electric Umbrella yep. because that's pretty much you walk in past Spaceship Earth and like you, you see next to Mouse Gears is Electric Umbrella and it's a big place to eat. Um, right. It also has ample seating in there. But I find there to be a lot more variety at the land at sunshine seasons. Well, considering that it's Epcot and with all the food that you can get in the countries, I mean, Electric Umbrella is the last place I would ever want to eat at Epcot. Right. Not, not you know, it, I mean, it's it's quick service. It's so not bad, but it's it, not bad. <laughs> it's very, but, very limited. But, the, you know, there's quick service in almost every country. And a, the quick service is obviously geared towards that company. So you can get... Country? You said company? Yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, you know, there's so many variety of foods. And then, you know, if you don't want to walk into the countries, you know, going to Sunshine Seasons is, I think the food's a little better. So, Right. I mean, honestly, if you have a lot of time to spend at Epcot where you can go back over two days, you might want to consider doing Future World one day and World Showcase the other day because there is plenty to do in both. Right. You know, or split it up because no matter how you do it, there's plenty to see. Especially if you just walk around in the countries because there's so much to see in each of them. You know, if you give yourself plenty of time and you don't feel pressured, then you can really kind of, you know, just stop and smell the roses. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So it also inside of the land is living with the land, which is a boat ride through the greenhouse. Mm -hmm. And that's free. That usually doesn't have a too long of a wait. We actually had gotten fast passes for that and basically didn't need it because right. we just cut 10 people in line was <laughs> was the equivalent yeah, of what much. it did for us. Um, it, it depends on how busy it is. Of course, when we were there, it was not that busy. So I'm not telling you don't get a fast pass. Uh, you may or may not need one is all I'm saying. Yep. And we really enjoy that because you get in this boat and you go through... It's basically a pre-recorded tour of the greenhouse. Yep. But another option, if you don't mind spending the money, and it is 
$25 for adults and $20 for the children, at least as of today. I looked it up. So mm-hmm. today's dates in uh, July of 2019, right. those are the accurate prices. They may even take discounts. I think there's a pass holder discount on, mm-hmm. on the tour. Right. Um, you can book it in advance, but honestly, I don't think we ever book this one in advance. I think no. we've done it two or three times and we've always just walked up. Well, they do it multiple times a day, so... You know, maybe in the very busiest of seasons, you know, like right now it's summer. So, you know, maybe now you would still need a reservation. But but honestly, like you said, we've never, ever gotten one. So we've just walked up and always gotten into the next tour. So. Right. We're not discouraging reservations because right. sometimes it's good to have that reservation so that just like your fast passes, so you can kind of plan your day accordingly. But if you're there and you find you have some extra time, then it might be something that you might want to see if there's availability. I guess that's more what I'm saying sure. know, is that don't be scared to ask because they may be able to accommodate you. Right. And it it's basically the same tour. However, instead of being on the side, you know, going through the boat and experiencing it, now you're actually walking through this greenhouse and you will have a guide that works there that can answer your questions. So instead of being pre-recorded, it's live you get a lot more you get a lot more information too right i mean and one of the things that they did on the, when we did the tours i think they still do it is they let you release ladybugs right you know which you're not going to do that if you're doing the boat tour of course so that's a really neat tour we've recommended it before because of the price mm-hmm. it doesn't take a long time so it's it's really a great experience so if you've never done it we definitely recommend you try it at least once because you might like it and if you don't like it then you didn't spend a lot of money on it that's right i mean that's a good way to look at it a good way to dip your toes into the tours of disney right and now of course you would of course need epcot admission to do this tour because it's inside of epcot there are other tours that don't necessitate admission i think the majority of the tours do yes i mean they have some tours at um animal kingdom lodge I think that you don't need admission to animal to Animal Kingdom. Well, I think you still. Well, it depends on the tour. If you're going to the if you, if it happens at a park, you're probably going to need admission to the park. Right. Yeah. Almost all of them that happen yeah. at the parks, you're going to need admission. Probably the most popular item at yeah. Epcot's The Land is soaring around the world, but people call it soaring. Right. I've never heard someone say, "Oh, I'm going to go ride on soaring around the world." Yeah. Then nobody calls it that. Yeah, I've never never heard that. It was really funny when I was looking it up to get the details for what we were going to talk about today. I'm like, really? This is called Soarin' Around the World? I never realized that. It makes sense. Yeah, and even to this day, it's a very popular... Oh, it's extremely popular, but they have it. they've um, just recently, recently being within the past like year or two, renovated wow. it, adding another screen, didn't they? Or adding more seating or something. I don't remember if they expanded. I mean, they redid the mo- movie. Uh, from what the original one was um but yeah it's uh uh it's still you know it of course i'm looking at it right now and there's only a 10 minute wait well they close at uh 9 p.m and it's 8 p.m uh, as we're yeah. recording this so yeah so that's you know people are probably lining up for the fireworks because yeah right, there's, so, no, there's no real weight on so, anything except- so that might be the hint that if you don't get a fast pass for it because during the day you pretty much need a fast pass for this ride or we would highly recommend you use a fast pass because otherwise you might wait a long time. Yeah, that's right. So maybe you, if you're unable to get a fast pass for it, you might want to consider just trying it later in the day because maybe the line won't be as long. Well, that's always a, a top, uh, a top tip. If you don't want to, if you don't need to see the show that's going on, uh, whether it's the fireworks, fireworks yeah. or, or a parade or whatever, those are, are really good times to go jump in line for, for a ride. So maybe you used up your three fast passes for something else. Now, now you can grab a fourth ride without having to wait as long. Right. So. And what Soarin' Around the World is, is a simulated hang gliding flight across the globe. It's shown at 180 degree, 80 foot IMAX digital predictor projection dome yep. and i don't remember i can picture what you sit in but i don't know how to describe it it's a seat where's the bottom the bottom pump ching which one is that oh yeah that oh. one thanks honey yeah. yeah it's a seat you, you sit s- in the seat you sit in the seat 
I personally, being a heavy set woman, do not feel very safe, even though I know it's completely safe because Disney is not going to have rides that aren't safe. But it's not my favorite for feeling secure because it just has a lap belt and you go up. Well, there's a lap belt with a crotch strap, so you're not going to fall out. I mean... I still don't feel safe. I don't feel secure in it because it's like a swinging, like a swing. Uh, you're not swinging that much. I know, but. It, well, I, it, I don't. I mean, it's also not a ride that you want to take if you're afraid of heights. Well. Because unless you're in the. So if you're in the front row, you're going to go up the highest. And like it says, it's, a you know, it's a hundred and something or 80 foot. So uh, I don't know if that's how high you go up, but. You, you go might up go pretty, up 70 feet. You go up pretty maybe. far uh, because there's basically three rows of people. So there's got to be enough room for all of that. So you, you end up going up pretty high. So Yeah. I, I, I don't mind it, but I'm not a huge fan of it. And if you're right. wearing flip-flops or shoes that easily come off, they, they make ask you, take you to them take off. them off and yeah. put them in the basket underneath you. So that's another reason. Um, I mean, it's a beautiful ride. And if you're not scared of heights, it's beautiful. It's really immersive and it's really cool. But, you know, well, for that, me, one actually, is enough. That's the other thing with the heights is that what, what they're showing on the screen, you know, it's so immersive that you're going to get, you're going to freak out by what's on the screen as well. Cause you're going to go flying over a cliff or something like that. And it's going to it, yeah, it hits you in the head. So. Well, they call it soaring around the world because right. you see things such as the Great Wall of China, the Great Pyramids of Egypt, and the Taj Mahal. I mean, you're, you're seeing right. all different. It's it's an amazing view. It really is neat. Yep. Uh, but like I said, I've done it more than once, so I'm pretty much done with that ride. Yeah, we don't need to go on until the next time <laughs> they redo it. So, or you know, of course, if friends go you know we won't say no but it's not something we rush to get um and as we said fast passes are definitely recommended and for those of you who may not know fast passes you can get as long as you have an active ticket 30 days before you, your trip or if you're staying on property 60 days before your trip mm -hmm. um so they do make it pretty easy for people um but definitely a great place to visit when you go to epcot we really enjoy going to the land um again the the worst, I say in quotes, uh, is walking up that ramp to get in there because, you know, if you go there later in the day and you're tired, it's like, oh, my God, I have to climb up this ramp. Right. The good thing is when you're leaving, you're climbing down it. Yeah. So it's a lot easier. Well, you're not really climbing. You're just walking. Yeah, walking. There. Yeah, right. it's not steps. It's a ramp. So, yeah. um, and again, it's it's definitely handicap accessible. So that's not an issue at all they have a little bit of everything there definitely try dining there at sunshine seasons if not garden grill but sunshine seasons is a great quick service to try if you haven't done so and on that note i think i'm going to go have dinner all right and i already told you it's eight o'clock and i haven't had dinner yet so i'm gonna go have dinner so for that i will say thank you for listening thank you for subscribing thank you for rating and reviewing again you can find us two grown-ups and a mouse or our website two grown-ups and a mouse .com. that's right and i will say good night good morning you will say good morning i say good night or i could say good afternoon good evening or i could just say goodbye okay bye bye